Everyone, Bill Nichols here. Let's talk Lightroom export presets. So today I'm going to show you a way to automate your export process so that you're not having to go into each image every time, set all of your export settings, do the export, and then repeat that over and over and over again. A great thing about both Photoshop, Lightroom, and many other programs is that you can build automation into them. So what I wanna show you today is how to take the way that you export, put those into a settings preset so that you always have it there. Then whenever you have an image or group of images to export, and you want to export them with those same settings, you can just right click, go to export, choose that setting, and just have Lightroom do all the work for you. So with that, let's get started. All right, so what I have here is I have these five images. We used this, these in the previous video that I did. Um, we've got the Bay Bridge, Reddington Pier in Tampa, Paris, a violin, and San Francisco. So I'm going to export these images. I'm going to do this by creating an export preset and then exporting them. So I could select one image. I could hold down command and select whichever ones I wanted. Or I'm just going to select the first one. I'm going to hold down shift, select the last one. Then on my keyboard, I'm going to hold down shift, command, and E. That's going to bring up the export preset, the um, export dialog. I believe on the PC, it's either shift, control, S, or shift, control, E. And what I want to do in here is I've got all of my export settings here. So when I'm creating an export preset to make sure that it holds everything, I want to set all of my settings, and then I want to add that as a preset and name it, and then I can go in every time and those are set. So let's get started. Let's create one for Facebook where we're going to export the images with a relatively high quality at 1600 pixels. So let's go to the desktop. So we're going to go export it to the desktop. Say to put in a subfolder called Facebook images. And again, this could be a subfolder anywhere that you wanted in a location wherever you wanted. Come down here to the custom text. I'm gonna put in Facebook image. And I usually do a custom name sequence, but you have all these other choices. You can make it an X of Y, so it could be Facebook dash one of one, one of five, two of five, three of five, four of five, five of five, the original file number that it was, a custom name, date, file name, whatever, or you can edit and you can go in and create your own recipe. So we're gonna go custom name sequence. We can set the start number, so I'm gonna set it to one. So this is great because if you've previously exported 90 images and then you're going to, to start here and you're gonna re, you know, re-export and you don't wanna overwrite those or have it make a unique name on its own, you can say start at 91 and then it'll increment from there so you're not overwriting anything. File settings, we're gonna go to JPEG, let's just set it to 90. The long edge, 1600, so whichever the edge is the longest, so if it's portrait, it would be the vertical. If it's, uh, if it's a um, landscape, it'll be horizontal. So this is going to make it 1600. So right now the image is 3840 by 2962. So that 3840 will now be 1600, and the 2962 will be a ratio that's you know in the same aspect ratio. I don't do any output sharpening. I don't mess with the meta metadata. And for watermarking, if you do have a watermark that you've created, you can have it add that to every image. So right now I've created my settings. So I can go to add, and let's name this Facebook export, and we'll create it. So now we have Facebook export, all of these settings. Let's go ahead and export. So it's exporting them. Let's create one more. Maybe I have a blog that I, um, typically am going out to. So let's say that we've got, um, or let's say Pinterest. I don't know what that, or let's say LinkedIn. So for LinkedIn, I know that the, um, so we're gonna have this go to desktop, LinkedIn export. It's going to ask us what to do for existing files. So what that means is that if there's a file in there with this name already, it's going to ask if I do I wanna cancel? Do I wanna overwrite? Or do I wanna use a unique name? And it'll provide that unique name. Custom text. Let's go LinkedIn image, images. So it's gonna do a sequence again. Let's make these 500 pixels. Um, I don't really change the resolution. You can if you have a need to. And then I'm going to add this again as LinkedIn preset. Hit create, tell it to export. Now let's go in here. Let's go to our desktop. So we can now see LinkedIn export. Here are the images. We can see they're now 500 pixels wide. Let's come over here to Facebook images. And I've got a number in here because I've tested this one previously. 
So we've got Facebook images, and here we go. And that is creating a preset for export. So I wanted to make a really quick, short and sweet video on this. And what this is gonna help you with is when you have repetitive tasks. So anything that I need to do in Photoshop or in Lightroom, if there's a way to automate it, I try and do that so I don't have to do the same things over and over and over. And I'll show you on the next video what I'll do is how to sync settings between images. So when you've made an edit to an image, maybe you have um, 50 or 500 or 1,000 images from a party or from an event where the lighting is, is basically the same throughout and you need to change the white balance, you wanna change the exposure, and whatever across all the images in a similar fashion. I'll show you how to make that so that you can do that across all images in just one button press, a couple of button presses, but in just one action and sync your initial edit on one photo across all of them. So a lot of Lightroom videos to come up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions on this, ask me. So the steps are really simple. Go into the export dialog, define your export settings first, then click add add it as an export preset, then go to town with it. Do your next one. Just what you wanna make sure is that you set your export settings first and then click add. Otherwise, you'll add it, it'll think that what you have there is what you want, and then every time that you change that, it doesn't update that setting. In the same way, if you define a setting and you wanna make a change later on, just click that setting, click remove, define the new settings that you want, and then add that as an export preset. And that's it. So I hope you found that helpful, short, sweet video for today. You guys have a great day. Keep watching. I'll keep making videos. Have an awesome day. Thanks. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Did you catch yesterday's video? If not, click the video in the lower left to go to yesterday's video. But I want to remind you that right now I'm giving away a DJI Inspire case by Think Tank Photo. It's a $340 case. Awesome case. You can see that review and the giveaway in the video right to the side of me at the top. All that you need to do is go to that video, watch, subscribe, which you can click the subscribe link below to subscribe, and you can win this case right here. It's for the DJI Inspire. It's an awesome case. It's my way of saying thank you to you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. So check out yesterday's video. Check out this one if you're not entered yet. All you have to do is just comment, like the video, subscribe, and you'll be ready. We're over 4,000 subscribers now after just about two months or so of starting this channel. Once I get to 4,500, I'm gonna draw a name for this case. I'm gonna send it out to somebody just as a way of saying thank you. So thanks guys for watching my videos. Have an awesome day. You keep watching, I'll keep making videos. Talk to you soon.